Breaking news tonight. We are just getting exactly this moment in our newsroom a list of new subpoenas that are coming out from this January 6th committee. Uh, if you watch the news, you may notice that as of a few moments ago, we said this is the kind of thing we've been waiting on, but we literally just got them, and we think we have quite a notable guest for it. Congresswoman Zoe Lofgren, an experienced investigator and a Democrat from California who serves on the January 6th committee. Thanks for being here. Uh, you know more than most about this plan, the timeline, and what we just got, which is a list of some of the subpoena targets. What can you tell us about this? Well, this is an active investigation, as is obvious. Uh, the subpoenas uh, that were just issued are really directed at the organizers of the rally, uh, people who helped fund it, people who sought the permits. Um, they were campaign people. And we need to understand what was afoot here. From the very beginning, we've needed to, to find out who funded it, who planned it. You know, there was a mob that said they wanted to kill Vice President Pence, wanted to kill the speaker, wanted to overturn the election. We need to find out everything about how that happened. And this is a step to do that. Yeah, and Congresswoman, uh, I'm just doing this live with you. Uh, because if I'd gotten this list, you know, hours ago, I would have done my homework then. So uh, <laughs> permit me to, to just be a journalist. But I see here just in the documentation that we got, it says that you're, you're, the committee is investigating Women for America first and trying to get more information about what, their, what I take to be their motives or intentions. You've got 11 individuals, including their founder and chair, Amy Kramer, uh, Kremer, uh, Cynthia Chafian, which is listed here as the first, a person who submitted the first permit application to get that January 6th rally going. Uh, some names that, that news viewers might recognize, like Katrina Pearson, who worked directly on the Trump campaign. It states here uh, she was involved in the organization of the January 6th rally and in direct communication with the former president about the rallies. Uh, that's quite striking. What do you hope to learn uh, from these individuals and the records you're seeking about what happened leading up to the rally? Well, we, we don't want to jump to a conclusion. We're doing an investigation, not an accusation. We want to find mm -hmm. out everything there is to know about the coordination between the White House and these individuals whose names were up front in organizing the rally, what the intentions were, where did the money come from, how was it, how was it organized, how was that mob unleashed on the U.S. Capitol to overturn the election. We think that we'll learn things from these individuals. And what we've found is that, uh, you know, we're, as we get more information, it leads us to other information. Quite a few individuals have come forward voluntarily to provide information. Some people are asking for subpoenas, so there'll be more of those in, in days and weeks ahead. Others may be more recalcitrant, but whatever it takes, our job is to get to the bottom of this. And we take that task very seriously. Uh, there, there was, of course, a second impeachment uh, about some of these underlying issues. Um, the, the, the president, through the constitutional process, was not convicted in that, although there was a, a then some troubling evidence. Um, but much more seems to be publicly known now. And as you explained, you're investigating all these leads. This reference to direct communication between uh, Ms. Pearson and Donald Trump is one of the investigative leads or theories of the case uh, that this committee is going to explore is whether or not Donald Trump knew or was discussing that the prospect of using breaching the Capitol or violence as a plan, as part of the goal of January 6th in advance? I'll just say that a majority of the House, including Republicans, and 57 percent of the United States Senate uh, found that the president, then president incited this riot. Uh, that was mm. the vote. Uh, now, we didn't have available to us all of the information that is now coming forward. We need to find out every detail about this. And uh, when we have all of the facts, we're going to be able to lay that out uh, for the American people in, in a way that we think will be helpful for our country. We need to save our democracy here. We need to make sure that um, the threats to our democracy are averted and that our wonderful American experiment in self-governance is preserved. Hmm. Uh, and in our introduction to you, again, before we just got this breaking news, and for those joining us, it's brand new, 11 uh, subpoenas of new individuals, uh, including at least one former Trump campaign official 
uh, from the January 6th committee. Uh, in our introduction to you, Congresswoman, we also mentioned the fact that the, the, president, the former president has publicly asked people to resist uh, and not cooperate with your committee. Um, just for the record, what is your response um, to that request, uh, and, and what should those individuals and these 11 uh, individuals know about any obligations they have legally? They have an obligation, each of them, to respond to the subpoena and to produce documents and testimony as they have been uh, directed to do. Uh, the president, the former president, is a very litigious person. We all know that. He, he, he likes to sue people a lot. He usually loses. Uh, he's not the president. He doesn't have uh, executive privilege uh, because he's not the president. And so, uh, you know, we're prepared for whatever litigation, but I think some of this is frivolous. Uh, these individuals were not um, employees of, you know, they were not White House counsel. And even then, we got the White House counsel, a court ordered him to testify before the House Judiciary Committee. So I don't think the former president is on firm ground, but we're ready uh, to proceed to do what we need to do to get the facts. And I, I would hope that the president not involve himself in uh, obstruction of Congress, because that mm. itself uh, is a violation of the criminal code. Referring to the McGahn case, which, of course, the House did win, as you say, there was an effort by the then Trump administration to fight it. They lost McGahn. The White House counsel did testify. Uh, you said, Congresswoman, you don't think Donald Trump's on firm legal ground there. Uh, I would say that's, that's quite diplomatic. It, it really looked like he was on quicksand um, because he filed right. a lot of suits that, that, that resulted in the loss. That brings me to the final question. And again, I appreciate you being, being here on a busy day. The final question is, with this executive privilege battle, we talked a lot about the Trump side. What about the Biden White House, which, as we reported, initially said from the lectern, no privilege for you, Donald Trump. Then they came back and said, well, it's case by case. But with regard to your committee, it's one case. It's the January 6th case. Right. Do you have an understanding of what the Biden White House's position are, is? Will they honor Donald Trump's attempted secrecy here or overrule it, reject it, and provide this information? Do you know yet? Well, what I take from the Biden administration is they don't intend to stonewall the Congress or the select committee on this. Having said that, it is appropriate uh, to uh, take every um, assertion and uh, evaluate it and uh, on the facts and the law and reach a conclusion. But very clearly, they're not intending to participate in a cover-up of this, which is apparently what the former president is seeking to do. I think he does not look like an innocent man uh, when he tries to prevent the truth from coming out of the Capitol, where the select committee investigating the January 6th riot announced it has issued subpoenas to four members of President Trump's inner circle. Congressional correspondent Rachel Scott has the latest. Good morning, Rachel. George, good morning. Lawmakers leading the select committee said no one would be off limits, and now they have issued their very first subpoenas to some of former President Donald Trump's closest advisors. On this list, take a look. Former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows, former Deputy Chief of Staff Dan Scavino, former Defense Department official Cash Patel, and longtime Trump advisor Steve Bannon. The committee is demanding that those four men turn over documents and appear behind closed doors to testify in October. All of this intended to to gain insight into Trump's mindset in the days leading up to January 6th and as the violence unfolded that day. Congressman Adam Schiff says that they will use the Justice Department if necessary to enforce these subpoenas, but Trump is already vowing to fight this. And this does mark a significant turning point in the congressional investigation into January 6th. And lawmakers leading this committee say they are just getting started, George. Okay, Rachel, thanks for